Mr. McAfee, how are you today? I am good. How are you, my friend? I'm I'm doing just well, just well. Thank you for for coming on. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what what time of the day is it where you're at? Is or is that a, is that a secret? If I told if I told you that, you'd know my time zone at least, and that would oh. narrow down my location. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Uh, that's, somewhere within somewhere within the 24 hour time zones. That's where we are. That's that's exactly the answer I was I was expecting. So um, appreciate you be on the being on the show, and um, uh, I just wanted to uh, to say thank you and uh, appreciate it. And it looks like you're enjoying yourself right now. <laughs> I always enjoy myself, my friend. That's great. That's great. So uh, you are a very uh, you're a very well traveled man to say the least, right? Uh, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, I, listen, I've been. I think I hold the record for being in the number of jails in different countries. I think I broke the record with Dominican Republic. That makes thirteen different countries for me. Thirteen um, different countries. You, you've been. I don't, I don't know anybody who's been incarcerated with more than twelve. I had a good friend who was incarcerated twelve times. But I beat his fucking record. No, uh, you 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 beat his record. That's that's for sure. Um, Okay, so that that leads me to ask, um, which which uh, which prison was the best experience, and which was the worst experience for you? Okay, I would say in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Why? Okay. It was like party fucking central in there. I mean, no, you didn't have mattresses. Big fucking deal. The floor was not that hard. It was only concrete. However, the social atmosphere was spectacular 14 people in a, in a cell you know that was maybe 10 feet by 15 feet you had to take turns sleeping it was great uh, the worst experience was just four months five months ago with my wife janice and four of my people in the dominican republic only because the jail had no windows i mean it had no glass just iron bars right and the mos mosquitoes were like clouds of God, I don't know, something from hell. Right, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, however, however, they had fucking mattresses. Now, that that goes a long way in a, in a, in a prison for me. Nevertheless, right, right, right. Uh, it, the, the heat was like in the early hundreds, and mosquitoes were like in the early trillions, and um, it was not a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, Def definitely not the... Uh, the the atmosphere that uh, Puerto Vallarta was, right? So. Oh, now Puerto Vallarta. Listen, if you're in Puerto Vallarta, I recommend breaking the law <laughs> if you're looking if you're looking for jail experience. Keep in mind, Puerto Vallarta is the richest town in all of Mexico, populated by Canadians, uh, Americans, uh, England people, all the richest people. Right, and right. The, I mean, they're nice jails. They really are. Yeah, uh, uh, compared they, to other compared to other Mexican jails, other Mexican. I've also <laughs> been in jail in Chetumal. I didn't enjoy that. I'll be uh, really frank with you. I, I thought that sucked. So yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you can't really can't really choose choose where you end up some most of the time, right? So <laughs> no, you can't. Especially when they have a, a good. I mean, if you if you're actually choosing it, you need to make better choices. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So. Um, uh, you also you value to to say the least as well. You value freedom. Uh, I, I, am I wrong on that? I, you would not be wrong on that. Yeah. So to for you, what how would you define um, freedom for you? What 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 is freedom for you? It is the ability to be yourself completely, to be true to what you truly want in this life. I mean, I'll tell you what freedom's not. Maybe they'll give you a clue. Uh, waking up at Monday and dreading going to work. A Friday evening comes and you're joyful going home. You're a slave five days a week. And they let you out two days a week. And then maybe a couple or three weeks a year. In addition to that, to make you feel free, but you're not. You're in a marriage. And you loved your spouse intently when you got married seven years later or whatever the number may be, you realize you no longer love your spouse. Um, if you stay in that marriage, you're no longer free. 
So that's two examples of what freedom is not. But freedom is the ability to be yourself without fear. That does not mean that the out, some outside agency is responsible for your fear, like, oh, for fear of getting arrested or for fear of this or that. No, 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 no. For fear of the uncertainty that will happen, and it will fucking happen, I promise you, when you're true to yourself. That's the only freedom. And it does not depend on any person, any entity, or any situation. You can be free in a prison, I promise you. I promise you. Hmm. Right, right. So uh, that kind of reminds me of, a, have you read the book, uh, How to Be Free in an Unfree World? I have not read a book since Charles Darwin's Origin of Species. <laughs> My apologies. I'm not, I'm not among the educated. By the way. You know, well, we, uh, we need to get the questions down to a, a, you yeah. know, the least common denominator. Right, right. Well, um, ba basically, the, you know, won't bore you with the details, but the concept of the book is even though you, you know, you live in a society that has all these things that try and control you, you can still live free despite all of that, if you choose to do so, right? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course. In my mind, I have no master but me. And in my actions, I have no master but me. Now, my actions may be restricted by outside influences. Maybe I'm in a 12 by 12 prison cell and all of my actions have to happen within there. Well, still, I'm free. Do you understand? That... There is nothing outside of you who can ever truly imprison you. When you are imprisoned, if you're free, it's not because of your choice by continuing with a job that you hate or continuing with a spouse that you no longer love or anything. That's, <laughs> that's slavery. Yeah. If they force you, to live with this wife, I haven't heard of that circumstances, if someone does, then you're still free. You can sit her down and say, listen, you know, they, you know, the CIA told me that if I leave you, they're gonna whack me, so I need to stay with you. But here's the truth, sweetheart, I just no longer love you. You're still free, do you understand? Totally free. Right, right. So you, you say that, um, you know, fr freedom is, when you choose to be free, um, but would you say there are varying degrees Maybe. of? Yeah, I'm a cigarette. I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. All right. Would you say there are different right. degrees of threats to freedom in in the world? No, there's no, there's only one threat to freedom, and that's you yourself, it's right? Called, and that threat is fear. Whether the fear comes from a government or from a a boss that keeps reminding you. How are you going to pay your mortgage if you don't have this job? Or for a wife who says, if you leave me, I'm throwing you out of the house. <laughs> hmm. These are the fears that inhibit freedom. You don't have to be afraid of these things, though. You just have to accept them. You have to accept your situation in life, whatever it is, whenever it is. That does not in any way restrict your freedom people now a society of free people if you remove the external constraints <laughs> that would be the garden of eden a society of, of free people without external constraints what's an external constraint a government saying you can't smoke weed it's illegal. And in some states, you do years in prison just for possession of fucking joint still right. today. Right. Uh, <laughs> but that doesn't make you less free people. It merely puts a reality in your free universe that you must accept and deal with as you choose. Try to go, okay, I'm not going to smoke. Cool. Or, fuck you. <laughs> I'm smoking anyway. Right, right. So you're a you're a big proponent of uh, civil disobedience, and um, how how would you uh, how how can people do uh, random acts of civil disobedience in their everyday life that they may not even realize? 
by understanding what civil disobedience means. Okay. There are two types of laws. Right. One, one, okay, which prevents you from taking action, like murdering your neighbor, robbing a bank, burglarizing a little old lady on the street, robbing a liquor store, beating up a random stranger in the street. It's that type of law. There are the other laws, which are civil laws. You know, you can't spit on the sidewalk. It's a civil law. <laughs> doesn't harm a single person. It might gross people out, but fuck me, that's your problem. Hmm. These laws, you have a right to disobey if you choose, because they are imposing upon you a set set of behavioral conditions that are not innate in nature. They didn't come from your genes and Evolution did not sprout them out of its asshole. No, <laughs> they come from people who are narrow-minded and fearful themselves. And these laws, like you must pay income taxes by my refusal to file a fucking return, have I hit anyone, punched anyone? hurt anyone. Now the government will say, yes, you've hurt everybody. We need your money to help the poor. Right. Wake up, people. If you believe that shit, then just wake up. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, and these laws, if you believe in your heart, and I do, with income tax, for example, do you realize what income tax truly is? It is a clever reversion 1,000 years into human history to the feudal ages where the king had the right once a year to come around and either do one of two things. You must work for me two months out of the year. End of story. Or if I choose, I will simply take two months' work from your labor. Well, fuck me, that's 15% of the entire product of people who are barely subsisting off of potatoes or whatever they're growing. Do you realize that income taxes have placed those people back into that society? Only right. instead of a king who's taking, you know, two months uh, out of the year, no, it's the fucking government sometimes taking three months out of your year in terms of wages because the king had a choice. You will work for me on whatever projects I want. If I'm building a castle, I'm going to drag your ass into where I'm building it, and you're going to spend two fucking months for free. I pay you jack shit building my castle. And income taxes, is that not the same? Please, people, wake the fuck up. I mean, I don't know how more clear I can make it. Civil, right. disobedience, is, civil disobedience is your only tool. Do you understand? Listen, do you think it works? Yes, you have seen it work. Weed, marijuana, has been illegal in America for 75 fucking years. And yet, a massive number of people have continued to do it in the tens of millions. Exactly. Right. When, you smoke, when you smoke weed in a state, with rigid and uh, barbaric laws about weed, and you smoke it, you are acting out civil disobedience. Do you see? And do you see that that civil disobedience is what has changed this world in terms of its attitude toward weed? Well, God damn it, if 20% or 40% or I don't know anybody who doesn't, so I, you know, I have no clue. 20% uh, or 40% of our population refuses to stop. Well, we got to change. That's civil disobedience and its power. And what I am urging people to do is with, like my McAfee decks, creating it was an act of civil disobedience. I ignored the demands of the SEC to put know your customer and anti-money laundering and everything else. No, fuck you people. 
It's your job to catch criminals, not mine. If that's all of our jobs to catch criminals, we are all policemen. We are the equivalent of Nazi Germany in 1939 when parents told on their, I mean, when children told on their parents to get them arrested if their parents sent them to bed too early. Fuck me, see where we're headed. Yeah. 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 So it, it kind of um, leads me to um, uh, kind of a recent story um, in this, this area of the world here, the, uh, the Virgil Griffith uh, arrest. Uh, you, you recently uh, tweeted about that story. Hey, baby. Uh, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he, he was arrested in the United States yeah, for, um, for basically. For helping. For helping. Yeah, for helping the, the North Koreans by showing them how the blockchain could help them avoid U.S. sanctions. Well, fuck me. I mean, that's common goddamn knowledge. You can Google it. Exactly. I mean, yeah. What, what national secret did that poor bastard reveal? Nothing. Nothing. Right. He revealed publicly available information, and if the Koreans did not have him. They could have Googled it in, in an hour and gotten everything. He could have told them, please, yeah. do you see what has happened? If our president says, no, I'm sanctioning, then it now becomes of uh, treason to defy a president's fucking sanction. Wake up, America. I'm far more guilty than he while I was in Cuba this year. This year. I was tweeting constantly about, I want to help the Cubans use cryptocurrency and the blockchain to avoid U.S. sanctions. So you know I'm on their fucking list. Right. Yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah, like you said, the, that information is readily available, you know, just, just on the Internet. But what, what gets me is he's, he's arrested for... Um, whatever whatever crime they're they're charging charging him for for talking to the north koreans yet president trump can freely meet you know face to face with the leader and 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 that's just fine because of yeah and, portraying and I, I don't i don't want to devolve into yeah. personalities because i don't give a right. shit about trump or anybody no yeah. it doesn't matter in my mind who the president is it does not Presidents and Congress lost their power in the 50s when the CIA became the controller and the owner of all the world's secret information. And even presidents, you think a president comes in, sits in the Oval Office and goes, oh, my first question is, do we have aliens? Do you think they tell him? No. They sit him down and say, Mr. President, I'm very sorry, but you do not have a need to know. Do you understand? This magic word the CIA invented in 1960, 1960, okay, 60 years ago, this magic phrase, need to know, is the ultimate now power in the world. So when Congress wants to know what's going on, if they want to tell them, they will. Uh, if they ask a specific question, it's need to know. But, con but the CIA controls the president and Congress through selective release of information. You know how you can control everything. I mean, let's say I want to change the world's mind or the U.S.'s mind about gun ownership. Now, if I rule the information flow, I promise you every man, woman, and child in America would be packing a gun, and how would I do it? I would never report on random shootings in the streets or anything like that. No. I would only report on, oh, Granny Smith in Pocatello, Idaho, saved her life by shooting a criminal trying to rape her. And, oh, uh, Mrs. Jones saved her four-year-old daughter when two thugs broke in the back window and she blasted them away with her shotgun. Fifteen or twenty of those stories and every person in America will arm themselves. Do you see how easily we are misled, how easily we are led as sheep to slaughter for fuck's sake people and so sometimes now generally the the cia does not have to manufacture information they've got enough that they can selectively motivate 
anybody in this in this on this earth. Sometimes doesn't work. One prime example: Second Gulf War. The CIA needed for Iraq to be neutral. It was gaining great power and not moving in the direction that the CIA wanted the world to move in. They thought about whacking him, and the leader sat down and said, "You know, if we whack him, he'll be replaced. We've got to bomb him into, you know, the the caveman world, into、right. the stone age." And so, how do they do that? They go to the president and say, "Mr. President." I regret to inform you, and I know you're going to take this very hard. But as we have previously told you, Iraq has been capable of reaching England, our closest ally. We have discovered, sir, with 100% certainty that the Iraqis have nuclear weapons. Now, sir, it's not our job to advise you. It's not our job to. To motivate you in any direction whatsoever, it's just that, sir, I am glad this burden rests on your shoulders rather than ours. But what the fuck any president is going to do? You have to bomb them into oblivion. A rogue nation now with nuclear weapons and ICBMs? Well, fuck me, yes. And so what happened? They were bombed into oblivion. Were the nuclear weapons? No. The Every country in the world knew it. The American people knew it. The CIA knew it. Who did not know it? The president and Congress. Why? They get their information from the CIA.、Right. This is the world we live in. It does not matter who sits in the Oval Office. Our system is a car with a broken steering wheel. Who cares who's driving it? <laughs> it's going where it's going. Right, and so you、um, you don't mind you don't mind if I I shoot up heroin now. I just I just noticed it's quarter after, and、um, it only takes a minute. Well, be my I'm guess. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. My、no. wife always looks at me very askance when I make jokes. So that's 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 perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Now, speaking of、uh, presidents, you ran for president、uh, two years ago. Or three years ago now, right? In 2016, correct? 2016, yes. Yeah, yeah.、Um, I actually watched the.、Uh, you you ran under the、uh, Libertarian Party ticket, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. and and、uh, you were part of the debates. How how was how was that、uh, being being on the debate stage for that? Well, the being on the debate stage is nothing. But well,、yeah. how it was was it was my first exposure to politics. I、yeah. mean, other than from. The the perspective of an outsider, and outsiders know jack shit about politics. Even in the Libertarian Party, it's like <laughs> it's it's a dog eat dog world. I discovered、right. that that didn't bother me. I didn't want to be president. Who in a right mind would want to be a puppet with a thousand strings attached to you? Not me. However, I wanted the national stage, and I did get it, and I will get it this time, because I have things I'd like to say. I mean, things I've been saying to you, for example, that maybe a wider audience might want to hear, or not. Right, right. So, basically, it boils down to it doesn't matter who sits in that chair. It's it. They they have no real control over. No, over they have. They lost it. They lost it seventy years ago. Sixty-five、right. years ago. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So、uh, I kind of, you know, so some of these,、uh, some of the new candidates out there are expressing some ideas that the general public really aren't familiar with. For example,、um, Andrew Yang talks about、uh, UBI or the Freedom Dividend.、Um, you do you feel? How do you feel about? Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on? <laughs> I got no thoughts、okay. on on anyone's specific proposals. I do have thoughts on what they're going to do after they gain office and are unable to to bring them about. Because、right. have you ever seen a single president, with the exception of Obama, with Obamacare, which was unraveled by the next administration,、right. a single president 
come through on a promise. They can't. That's what I'm explaining to you. You got a broken steering wheel in this car. So I don't give a flying fuck what Andrew Wang thinks he can do. Right, right. He can't. He can't. Right. He, he can't. I'm sorry, Andrew, yeah. yeah. Not Wang. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. I, yeah, go ahead. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah, he, um, yeah, I, I, I pretty much expected that response, but. Um, it was, uh, it was it was worth worth and, it. And here, people, yeah. so we can stop any future nonsense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> people ask me what I think of Trump, of Hillary, of, mm-hmm. of, of, of all of these party guys. I have the same answer. I haven't even met them. I can't help you. I don't know shit. I don't know them. And neither do you, people. How <laughs> you know is what the mainstream media feeds you. And you actually form opinions from what the MSM tells you. I watched this with astonishment. It's like, what do you think of so-and-so? How the fuck would I know? I've never even met them. I mean, I met Trump at a party years and years ago. Right. Barely remembered him. I'm sure he doesn't remember me. Shook hands for four seconds and moved on. That was it. How the fuck am I going to know anything about this man? Never had dinner with him. Never sat down and talked philosophy, the nature of life, sex, human relationships. I know jack shit about anybody unless I know that anybody. So no, don't ask me about anybody because <laughs> trust me, it'll be the same answer. Right, right. Um, so recently you've, you've uh, come out with a, um, a new, uh, new privacy coin, um, whacked, right? It's not a privacy coin. Oh, it's not, not a privacy. Joke. It's a jo- it's a joke. joke. It's a it's a joke coin. Joke coin. Uh, I was I was just you know surfing on the meme about Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, and obviously he did not kill himself. Yeah. If there's a single person left in this world that thinks he mm-hmm. killed himself, please move the fuck out of your mother's basement and see the world because it's interesting out here and not what you think. Do you, do you think though this, um, yeah, it's the Epstein thing has become uh, an internet meme. Do you, do you think though that it's, it's kind of exposing just the everyday average person to the possibility that there's some of these, uh, what are considered conspiracy theories are, are not really conspiracy theories, but true things. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course they're true things. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. Listen, people get whacked by the CIA, by the NSA, by the Secret Service, by the military covert agencies. Good God, this is how they operate. And they go, how are we gonna deal with this? You wanna whack the guy? No, I don't think that's necessary. Why don't we just have him leave office or or whatever, we'll blackmail him or have somebody blackmail him, whatever. No, I mean, they whack people. This is how the the covert world works. And, And all I'm trying to do Imagine, what would it be like if everybody told the truth? So the day after Epstein is murdered, what's on television is not all of the speculation and everything, but people going, the jail guard. Yeah, uh, I was paid $10,000 not to go down the hall that night. I, I, don't, I didn't even ask why. I mean, why get involved? Yeah, so I took the money. Uh, who'd you take the money from? Oh, I took it from the, the uh, police chief. Okay, good. Mr. Police chief. What happened? Oh, I, I gave, uh, well, let's say I gave three of the guards $10,000 each. Uh, I hired a fake cleaning company to come in to explain why they weren't down there. Um, I kind of fucked up about Jeffrey's height, six foot one, and the bed being five seven. But, you know, I did the best I could. Well, who gave you the money? Oh, well, that, that came from a senator so and so. You go to senator so and so. And they all explain it. What would happen? the moment after that video clip ended, if there's not chaos, outrage, and action by every person in America, then I don't know what there is. And yet people, we don't need them to tell us that horrific truth, because if we have half a brain, we can see it for ourselves. But because the government says, oh, 
here's the official record, it was a suicide. We accept that shit. Why? It's official. It has authority. Oh, well, okay, we can stop speculating now. The, the authority has spoken. He killed himself, so <laughs> how about that? Wake the fucking people. Yeah, yeah. But basically, it's, it's, uh, this story is opening the eyes of, of, of a lot of people, and um, it, it's very apparent that the, uh, the media, you know, did everything they could to cover it up. And, but there, there's some independent media out there that's, that, that is, you know, trying to expose this. Do you, do you think that there's any, um, they'll, they'll get anywhere with that? Their Project Veritas? Uh, you know, I mean, the bigger question is not will they get anywhere with this story, but will the independent media be able to remain independent? That's, that's the only question we need to talk about because that is the fundamental issue. If they are not, if these podcasts and blogs and, and um, uh, everything else out there to get information to people do, become, do remain free, we as a people will remain free. We'll figure out pretty quickly which podcast is just in it for money, glory, fame, boredom and those who actually are trying to say something right we're not stupid people we're not okay we're only stupid when we live in a system that is controlled by a powerful pyramidal structure and those at the top are corrupt well fuck me <laughs> it's not a pleasant place to live we can shrug that shit off do you understand by using the tools we have, we, we have the blockchain, we have cryptocurrency, we've got podcasts, podcasts. We're now getting, by the way, uh, unstoppable domains on the blockchain. Do you know what this means, people? But if you get a domain name like, here's the truth about the corruption in our government, and you call it whatever that is, on the blockchain. <laughs> no power on earth <laughs> that can ever shut that domain down because you got the key to nobody else unless you're stupid enough to give them to somebody else and that's your business. But yes, imagine that. The U.S. government does not like what you're saying on your website. Something that website is, whoa, shut down? That oh, can't be. Can't mm. be. Under any goddamn circumstances using unstoppable domains. And there are three country, companies out there now making these domains where the domains are on the blockchain. Can't be shut down by anybody except the person with the keys. And now tell me that is not a magical creation from the blockchain. Yeah. By the way, I'm not, I'm not promoting these companies. I'm just saying, although right. I am working working with all of them with my distributed decks and other things. We're working on a project now. This is the first time I have mentioned it, right? So you know that human history is written by conquerors, is it not? Right. I mean, the, okay, so the Spanish came into the, to northeastern Mexico to the Mayan region and conquered. That was Cortez. There were hundreds of thousands of books that they found. They burned them all except for four <laughs> and then wrote the history of the conquest. Um, it's happening now in every moment of our lives. Those in power who choose to censor, uh, remove, like you think the government can't remove a, not just the entire web page, but just a single file within one. Yes. Um, the, the power to, to control really everything in your life so that history even now is being written by the power not you imagine a world where something happens or right? there's a terrorist attack and you know people later on are are showing videos of weird shit like that's weird because this woman who was killed was also if you're talking to a soldier beforehand right. or whatever mm. um and and those things disappear it happens all the fucking time, people. What if that video were put on the blockchain in a historical database, the world's historical database 
searchable by subject, date, and time, and location. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> when politicians or anybody says one thing, let's all, let's all uh, the equivalent of Google that. Let's, uh, let's search the historical true record. Not some web pages somebody put up that Google index that might or might not be true. You know, sifted. No, I mean the actual fact of people who were there, right? And so now we have a consensus history, not a history created and manufactured by conquerors, not a history edited by those in power who fear the truth. But no, I mean it's just the fucking truth because. Who do we know who we are if not through our history, people? And if we have a true and accurate and reliable record of everything that happens, because everybody, people, has a smartphone. Everybody is somewhere doing something with their camera out. You've got 20 people anywhere. One of them is filming what's happening. Mm. We have now the tools to record history. And the only way we can do that reliably is through the blockchain. And so we're coming out with a product next year, and this is the first time I've, I've announced, I'm not giving you a product name, even, um, that is going to literally change history, starting with its implementation, by making sure that history can't be changed ever again well great that I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that that sounds extremely exciting because you know um the original intent of the internet you know is to you know freedom of information for for everyone you know no. so. will you do me a favor i, I don't ask favors of, of podcasters but uh, but you've been very kind to me so far yes sir that little clip that i just spoke Yes. About the new product, which is the history. Would it be possible for you just to excise, not excise, I mean to, to take a slice of that and send it to Janice that I might tweet it, referencing you, of course. It'll help your podcast, get you more viewers, and it will help me because that's the first time I've spoken publicly other than to my people about this. And I think I did a reasonable job and I want to have a record of that to tweet out prior to your releasing this interview. Can you do that for me? Of course. Of course. Thank we'll you do. so much, my friend. Yeah. To Janice. Yeah. Okay. And we'll we have time for one more question. I'm sorry. We're running out of time. I ran, I ran over time. No, that, that's, Janice, per, that's fine. Janice, Janice told me to tell people up front they have half an hour. And yes. um, I forgot to do it. So That's all right. Um, one, actually, one more question. Last question would be, um, not so much a question, but... Uh, if you have uh, any more, any advice to give to, to the viewers, <coughs> listeners, uh, what would it be? <coughs> well, whew, that's heavy. Yeah. Advice to everybody, which is common. Yeah. Do what you do, what you love and nothing else. I mean, nothing else. And if you are waking up every morning, every Monday morning, going, oh, fuck, i got to go to work, resign this instant. If you are in a long-term relationship with a spouse or significant other that began in joy and love and happiness and good times, and seven years later or whatever, you're no longer. Stop what you're doing immediately. Go and find that significant other and tell them the truth. Then apologize. Go home, back to back, and move out. And in every other area of your life, do exactly the same thing. That's my advice. Thank you very much. Well, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right.